Did you know that 3D printers are made to modify? Now, in this video, I'm going to go over three or four modifications that you can do as a beginner to your 3D printer, and a couple that I recommend. Um, they're not really modifications as upgrades, nothing game-changing, but they can be useful little features, especially if you plan to get into modifying your 3D printer. For modification number one, or upgrade number one, depending on how you want to put it, I recommend data cable isolation. So what I mean by this is most 3D printers nowadays have a data cable, USB cable or CAN bus, going from the control board up to the tool head, the main control board, normally under the 3D printer or in a separate enclosure, but the wire goes up to the tool head. This is a data cable and there is all kinds of signals going between the two boards throughout the entire print. What I mean by isolation is protecting it from outside frequencies. For instance, in ham radio, uh, when you have radios and cables, almost all the cables involved have ferrite core on either end of the cable. This is to ensure that there's no frequency or electronic or radio interference with the cable or data going from one place to another. This matters in 3D printing because all the cell towers, radio communications, cell phones, everything electronic ha gives off a frequency and these frequencies have a tendency to interrupt things. I'm not saying that it will interrupt your thing. I'm saying it's a possibility and it's a good modification upgrade to any 3D printer. It's really inexpensive and I definitely recommend doing it. So what you need for data cable isolation is ferrite cores and in this case, they're clip-on ferrite cores. They're pretty inexpensive, and if you get them in a pack, you get a whole bunch of different sizes and more than one of each size so that you can put them on different cables. For me, on my printer, which is the Silval SV08, I only have one ferrite core on the tool head, and it's right around the wiring harness or data cable right at the base of the tool head. And so far, I have had no interference issues, but I am aware that with a lot of other people with SV08s and other 3D printers I have seen is they ha will have interference and communication issues. Some people put four or five ferrite cores of different size on different cables in the printer underneath underneath the 3D printer, um, on here at the base, anywhere they can think of that could possibly help. Um, and it's definitely a good idea to do to exclude variables or get rid of variables when you're trying to troubleshoot or when you're working and modifi modifying your 3D printer, you want to have as few variables as possible for the smoothest, most effective modifications. So data cable isolation is something I definitely recommend doing, no matter what kind of 3D printer you have. It's just getting rid of variables. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the ferrite cores that I bought. You can basically buy any ferrite cores that are clip-on and that have decent reviews and you should be good to go. It's not the hugely complicated or anything like that. On to the second modification or upgrade and this is cable control or control over where your cables are going during the 3D print. A lot of 3D printers already have pretty decent cable control but depending on your 3D printer and how you plan to mod it, keeping your cables going where you want them to go is a good idea. Cable chains are really good, uh, piano wire is also really good but depending on where your wires are the cable chains are really great. For my Sovel SV08, I installed the cable chain designed by uh, Nadar at CN3D. I'll leave a link to the cable chain that I 3D printed, but I printed it out of ASA for higher temperature cha build chambers. I replaced the cable chain that came with my 3D printer because it didn't have a small bend radius. The one by Nadar goes underneath the back of the frame on the 3D printer, so it's lower profile. And for me, I only have a copper wire bent around my wiring harness going to my tool head. It keeps it where it's supposed to be. It's The base of the copper wire is zip tied, um, and so it stays in the right spot. Everything stays where it needs to be, but when I go to do a multi-tool head tool changing system, it's going to be piano wire all through. And I think keeping your cables well organized will help them stay out of the way, keep your printer from getting tangled in them, because that is a thing that can happen, and also keep them from catching on your 3D printer at the 3D print and popping it off the build plate. That's that's just not a good thing. Modification number three. This one is about cooling. Cooling your control board and the controller on your tool head. Keeping the MCU's main controller units for each board is important because having them overheat 
is just going to cause you unnecessary headache. For me, most of the time, or most 3D printers in general, you won't need to cool the tool head extra unless you're doing really high chamber temperature 3D printing. For now, let's just keep it to regular 3D printing. The best thing I can recommend for tool head cooling is basically, depending on your 3D printer, of course, but I would recommend changing or just adding a heat sink to the main chips on the tool head. And that's all that you have to do for the tool head. For the control board, for me, on my SV08, I replaced the original fan, which was a little high-pitched and noisy, with a Noctua fan. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a really quiet, high-flow fan. You can get them at different thicknesses, depending on how much flow you want. But for me, I went a little bit further for my main control board underneath this 3D printer. I removed the entire bottom plate of the SV08 with the fan that came with it. And I made a new one using the SDL files that are free to download for the SV08, which make it really easy for mod modding. I printed out patterns. I cut it out by hand. It, my plate doesn't have these folds, which allows airflow to go underneath the 3D printer because this would obstruct it because the electronics were in here and this blocked it, not blocked it, blocked airflow. So when I made a new plate without the tabs it allowed airflow to go through and that allowed me to put one of these fans underneath the 3d printer that did is basically blew underneath all across all the electronics and through to the, the bottom of the printer where you can feel the air coming out it's nice and cool it keeps the printer at a good temperature printing for hours and hours and hours which with a 3d printer with a 350 millimeter by 350 millimeter by 330 millimeter bar build area. That's a, it can print some really big prints that take forever. The temperatures can get hot, so I cut out the variables of temperature for my control units so that it's something I don't have to worry about. Less headache for me. Um, this is an AC Infinity fan. It's for like DVRs. Um, I'm not really sure what those are, but basically I think music players and amplifiers and stuff like that. And that's what it's made for. It runs on 5 volts USB. Um, and it has a USB female as well, so you can do them in uh, series or whatever. So you can connect multiple of these fans up together, and then if you have multiple 3D printers. They're really inexpensive. I think it was like $12 or something. I'll leave a link for it in the description. That's another upgrade that I definitely recommend. That is that. So if you liked the video, if you liked the upgrades that I showed you, in this video, modifications or whatever, uh, let me know in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Did I say comment twice? Anyways, if you're interested in future videos with a tool changer with this 3D print, uh, Sobel SV08, and uh, really cool 3D printing stuff, please please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.